Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On today's video, I'm going to be cooking up some beautiful beef back ribs on Sentara Pro's Argentine Grill. Let's get going. And here are those beef back ribs. These were sent courtesy of certified Piedmontese. Very, very meaty. They do have the membrane on back and on beef back ribs, I like to pull the membrane like I would on pork ribs. Beef short ribs, I don't worry about the membrane, but uh, on back ribs, I like to pull it off. So we're gonna do it just how I would on pork ribs. And you can take a knife and work it under that first membrane. I, I personally, like to just sort of scrape it and loosen it up and then pull it back. And I do it this way because that way I avoid the risk of getting under that second membrane and pulling it off, which can, you know, basically cause the bones to fall out, kind of separate during the cook. And as usual, sometimes you can get it in one pull, other times it kind of comes off in pieces like it is on this one here. Now this particular rack has a lot of big deposits of fat right here. I'm going to go ahead and just even it out, kind of remove some of that fat. It's, it's not needed for this cook. All right, that's good enough. These other deposits of fat, they'll render off during the cook. I'm going to go ahead and prep this other rack of ribs. I'll be right back. Then of course, this rack of ribs peels off with one nice big strip, but cameras weren't rolling. Anyway, that's the way, that's the way it is in my life. I'm going to go ahead and season this simply with salt and pepper. I'm going to use some Worcestershire sauce as a binder. With these ribs, I'm actually going to make a kind of a savory barbecue sauce with a little sweet, a little heat added to the mix here. It'll be a good beef barbecue sauce. A little kosher salt, and I'm going to season the back. Not worried too much about how much seasoning I put on the back here. Some fresh pepper. And there we have it. Let me finish the second rack. And I'll meet you guys at the pit. So right now I have some lump charcoal burning in the bottom of this pit. So on this cook, I'm doing two things differently. I'm using a new accessory from Sentara Pro for this grill. It's called the Versa Hood. And what this is going to do, it's going to actually kind of trap that heat over the meat and also trap some smoke. It's going to turn it into more of a, we'll say a conventional kind of a low and slow cooker. And I'm not going to be using the rear bracero. I love using a rear bracero, but on this cook, I'm just gonna keep this lump charcoal down here, and then I'm going to feed it uh, splits of, of wood or chunks of wood to just keep the heat going and also to keep the smoke going. Let's go ahead and get these ribs on. So these thermometer companies, they always design that pit clamp to fit on a certain type of grate. So I'm gonna, I had to do a little bit of engineering here with some <laughs> aluminum foil. There you go, see now it's running the way I want it to and it's going to be between the ribs, not going to be touching the ribs which would affect the readout. And here's that lid, very heavy construction, open on the front and it's welded. This is solid steel here. go 
So you can see it accommodates these two big racks of ribs nicely. So a brisket would fit no problem. What I'm going to do now is I've got the lump going. I'm just gonna add a couple chunks of wood. I don't really need to increase the heat. I'll start doing that with full splits. This is hickory. So as far as heat control is concerned, what I'm going to do is basically raise or lower the grate or push or pull the heat source, you know, the burning charcoal, either away or directly underneath the food to increase the heat. And you can see I'm already getting that smoke coming out from underneath the hood. So this is doing its job. So right now the heat inside the dome here, <laughs> the lid, the Versa lid, is 224. It's coming up, getting a lot of smoke, but the wood hasn't ignited yet. I'm just going to monitor this as I would any pit. And I'll, again, I'll make those temperature adjustments by adding wood if I have to, lowering or raising the grate if I have to, or pushing away or pulling in those embers if I have to. Anyway, I'll just keep you guys posted on the progress of this cook. See you guys in a bit. We've been at this now for a little over an hour, about an hour, 15 minutes. Um, I've been very happy with the temperature. I'm using that probe, by the way, it's a Thermoworks smoke, so it's a good thermometer. At the low end, we've hit right around 220, 225, and at the high end, it's went up to 260, and I'm completely content with that temperature range, this meat, this type of cooking. Remember, even though we do have a hood on it, we're still open air cooking, you know, making the adjustments by moving pieces of wood around raising and lowering this. Actually, I've left it at this, this height right here since I um, walked away from you guys. So I haven't made any adjustments on the height. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flip the ribs. I want to take a look at them, but this is the first time using this. I don't know if I really need to flip them, but I'm going to. Let's take a look. So I want to lower this just enough to where I can remove that hood. Bottoms are looking great. You know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to flip these ribs. I'm going to let them go. I'm going to let them go. Now I do think I'm going to go ahead and just give them a spritz of water. <laughs> I mean, these are looking, they're looking like they're coming off of a offset pit. Look at that. Put my handy dandy modified. Temperature probe holder back in place. Yeah, Let me lower this just a little bit more. back to where it was. Wow, um, I'm impressed. I mean, again, <laughs> these are looking like, I haven't flipped them once, and they're looking like they're cooking on an offset pit, which is what I was hoping we would get with this, this lid, this hood. Very, very, very happy so far. So I mentioned earlier in this video that I was going to make or anoint <laughs> the ribs towards the end of the cook with a kind of a savory sweet heat kind of a sauce we're going to make that right now so to save time i have the first ingredient already in the pot it's one and a half cups of beef broth and it's it's boiling now i wanted to get it boiling i have here one teaspoon of pickling spice and i will have a recipe for pickling spice down below in the description box so you can make your own one tablespoon of beef tallow, so this is essentially beef lard. So I wanted the broth to be boiling so I'd get this lard melted quickly. And also I wanted to get that pickling spice, you know, steeping, so to speak. One half cup hoisin sauce. 
This will add some sweetness and some spice. One tablespoon soy sauce. So there's some umami there, but also some salt. One tablespoon freshly grated ginger. Again, that nice bite that ginger provides. And I have here some crushed red pepper, dried red pepper. I'm just gonna add a couple nice pinches of this. Let's get it stirred. Okay, this thing is really boiling now. I'm going to reduce this to a low simmer. And we are going to simmer this for 40, 45 minutes. I, I want this to reduce and I want those flavors to really pop. Other than that, did I mention that we're cooking barbecue beef ribs? They're looking good. So you'll see them in the next update. I really don't know what that's going to be just yet, but uh, it'll involve the ribs for sure. Taking a peek at them at the very least. See you guys <laughs> then. So we're at the three hour mark now. I'm going to baste these with that sauce we just made. Would you just look, look at that color. A nice pullback. So I'm not concerning myself with temperatures here. I never do on ribs. I want to see where I'm at. Oh yeah. These are tender. I'm going to, we're going to sauce these and I'll give them maybe another hour. But these are definitely getting very ready to pull. Oh wow. Look at that. And it's just a, it's a nice, fairly thin sauce. With some great flavors that go perfect with beef. It's not going to overpower anything. So as you saw, those things are really tender. My plan is to give them one more hour to let that sauce tighten up, then we're gonna pull these bad boys. Little less than an hour since I last saw you. These ribs are done. And as you can see, the grate is now down pretty low. Rather than adding more fuel, I just lowered the grate as the coals died out. That way, you know, I'm not wasting anything, but I still maintain that heat I wanted. Oh my gosh. Just look at that. This is spectacular. I mean, I am very, very happy with this cook so far. Let's wait until we try it. But so far, I mean, these are gonna be good. So now we're just gonna pull these. I'm gonna take them in the house, tint them lightly with foil, let them rest a little bit. And I'm gonna give us a try. And here they are all rested up. First of all, look at the pullback on this. These are beautiful, beautiful ribs. They smell magnificent. Look at that. Now the tough part. I have to try these without being able to give you guys a try. Very, very tender. Yes, and they actually have a smoke ring. It's not crazy to find. Juicy. <laughs> Endorphins are firing off right now. Mm. These are like butter. I mean, so tender. <laughs> mm. People that know me know 
beef ribs are my all-time favorite. All-time favorite. Take it over brisket. Good beef ribs. Yeah. Smoke ring. I cooked beef ribs for four hours on an Argentine grill without flipping them once. Offset smoker quality right here. I mean, it's they're tender, they're juicy, they're smoky. I mean, they don't just taste like grilled ribs. They taste like what they are, which is low and slow barbecued ribs. And more than anything now, I wanna rock a brisket in this thing again. But I think the results are going to be a little different. I'm expecting great things from that little addition there. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. If you're not subscribed, please, please subscribe. Um, make sure you ring the notification bell. If you liked the video, hope you guys did. Give it a big old thumbs up. Keep those suggestions coming in. I will see you. Let me see. You people always want to know. This is from Cooper's Brewery in Australia, and this is their original pale ale. Great beer. Cheers.